Let's do a call option a little bit more carefully and then the put option. Uh, so I didn't really precisely define it. So I only told you it's an option to buy something. Uh, so in my example with the, with the Google stock, uh, we already said if, if, the strike, if the stock price, if the Google stock at maturity is 405 and the strike price is 400, the price for which you can buy the option, uh, you wouldn't you would exercise it because you would pay 400 and you could sell it immediately in the market for 405 and you would make five dollars right so um, if you look I'm gonna go through this table uh, more in more detail but if you look here this is what I just said so think of S of capital T as 405 in the future we don't know what it's gonna be but let's say it's 405 and K is 400 so what you get uh, is the difference uh, it's 405 minus 400, it's uh, $5 that you can get by paying the strike price 400 for something that you can sell for 405. Okay? So uh, that's really what you're looking at when you're holding a call option, the difference between the actual spot price at maturity and the strike price. So uh, if you are long call, uh, long uh, a call option, so you, you, you bought the call option, you have the option to exercise it, um, there are what can happen in, so in the in, at, at the initial time you pay some you some pay some price uh, what can happen in the future is only really two relevant scenarios one relevant scenario is uh, uh, option being uh, out of the money meaning that the google stock is less than four hundred dollars and the other scenario is when the stock uh, the underlying is above the uh, uh, strike price so let's look at that if the underlying price is less than the strike price, you don't exercise the option because uh, why would you again pay 400 for something which is maybe 390? You can buy it in the market for 390. So your payoff is zero, you don't exercise. Uh, and your total profit loss, I call it profit, but it's profit loss, uh, is negative. It's the price that you paid for the option at the very beginning. Uh, beginning is called small t for today, sometimes zero, I'll just use zero for today. Uh, but uh, if you think of beginning as, as uh, small t, then, then this is a notation for the call price at time small t today for a call with strike price k and maturity t. Okay? So this is just the price you paid for that option and that's your loss, you, you paid the premium uh, the, but you get, got nothing, you got zero, your insurance didn't uh, pay off. Uh, so your profit loss is negative, it's just the initial amount that you paid for the option. Right? Uh, on the other hand, if, uh, if the option ends up in the money, $405 for Google stock, uh, and you have to pay $400, you make the difference at maturity, you still paid the option price, C capital C of TKT, you paid it at the beginning, so your total profit loss is the, the, what you get at the end, which is the, this difference, uh, minus what you paid at the, at the very beginning. Okay? So that, that's the, the uh, outcome of this trade, if you're long a call. Uh, a little bit more on, on a typical notation here. If um, you, you use, uh, so the payoff, you can write this payoff in one, uh, one expression like this. It's a mac maximum of the difference S of t minus k and zero. Okay? And if S of t is bigger than k, so this is positive, then it's S of t minus k is your, is your profit, otherwise it's zero. This is payoff at maturity, not accounting for the price of the option at the beginning. And uh, there is another mathematical notation here, uh, which is S of t minus k plus, positive part. This plus should really be in the superscript here. Um, so that, that's just notation. Uh, you write this maximum of S of t minus k and zero as S of t minus k plus positive part. Uh, and your total profit loss, so that's the payoff at maturity. The total profit loss is simply the payoff at maturity minus the initial price that you paid for the option. Okay. So let's, uh, let's represent this long call position in a graph. Uh, it's uh, just easier to think about what's going on. Uh, some specific numbers here, suppose the strike price is $50, suppose you paid initially uh, $6 for this option, uh, and so your payoff is the difference between whatever the stock price is going to be at the end and 50 
max maximum of that and zero. And a total profit, you subtract, you subtract $6 that you paid initially. Uh, so if we ignore the initial cost, this is the payoff at maturity. Uh, before 50, as long as, as the price is before, below 50, uh, you don't exercise the option. The option is going to be at maturity out of the money, so you get zero payoff. On the other hand, uh, if the option, if the strike stock price is higher than 50, you get a difference, and this difference is just this line, 45 degrees line going through K. Yeah? So that's how the call option payoff looks like as a function of stock price at the end. Yeah? As we said, options are really nothing else but nonlinear functions uh, of the underlying. So this particular nonlinear function, it's a piecewise linear, right? It's li linear here and linear here, but, but it's not altogether it's nonlinear. Uh, it's, a, it's a convex function of the stock price. Uh, and if you do take into account also the, the initial price, you just subtract six in this case from everything. So you just move the whole, you move the whole uh, graph down by six. Uh, that, that's the initial price that you paid. So that, that goes as your loss. Uh, and there is something called the break even point. That's the point uh, f for which if the stock price ends up at that point, your total profit loss would be zero. Okay. So uh, in, in this case, uh, since you're subtracting six, uh, you would have to gain six at the end uh, to have zero profit loss, which means that the stock price should be at 56, so that you make uh, 56 minus 50 as a payoff of the option, which would be six, minus six would be zero. Right? So if the stock price is 56, 56 minus 50 is 6 minus 6 is 0. That's your break-even point. A short call position, it's just mirroring uh, around. This is just a negative of the, of the long call position. Right? So uh, if, we, if we don't account for the initial cost, which you know is actually a profit because you're the seller here, if you're short, you get six dollars at the beginning. If you don't account for that, if you just look at your payoff, if the option is not exercised, which is below the strike price, zero to you, zero to the buyer. Uh, however, if the option is exercised, uh, your payoff is uh, goes down as the stock price goes up. It's the difference. Uh, it's the you know negative of this maximum, so it's going to be fifty minus the stock price uh, in this case. And that's this this line going down. Okay? And if you if you do account for the initial price, uh, that's what you received as the seller. So you just add six dollars to every point. You just move the whole graph up by six. The break-even point is is the same as before. It's fifty-six. In which case, both you and the seller uh, have a total profit loss of zero. Uh, and well, if you look at this. One thing uh, to notice in, in terms of trading is that your losses in principle can be unbounded, right? If, if the Google stock goes to 900 uh, and goes larger and larger uh, and you will only get 400 for it, well, in this case, it's $50. So if this stock goes you know, to 200, 300, 400 and, and you only get 50 for it, uh, then your losses uh, go larger, grow, grow larger, larger. Uh, so uh, unless you already hold that stock, so you can just deliver it. Uh, if you have to buy it in the market, you may have a lot of, you may have, you may need a lot of cash to do that, right? Depending on how big the stock went up. Um, so so the loss can be really high, which is if you try if you try to trade options you can trade options uh, say on, uh, using an online brokerage uh, but typically you have to have some margin account where you have cash to be able to pay for potential losses right? it, it's, it's going to be easier to buy options uh, and then uh, you don't uh, you know your losses are limited if you look at the previous graph of the call option uh, but uh, if you sell a call option your loss can be huge, uh, which is why uh, a brokerage would uh, require you to have a to have a cash account, a margin account, to be able to pay for potential losses. All right, a put option. Uh, put option, as we said, is a, is the right to sell. 
So uh, in my example with the Google stock, if I sell you a put option, that means that you can sell to me Google stock for $400 three months from now if you want to, and, but you don't have to. Yeah? It's, uh, it's up to you. Uh, so this is going to be a reverse situation, right? If the Google stock is 405 uh, <coughs> you don't want to sell it to me for 400 if you can sell it in the market for 405 So in, in, in this case, in this case, you, you, you don't exercise. If it, if it had been a call, you would have exercised. Uh, on the other hand, if the Google stock is 390 three months from now, uh, then uh, you do want to sell it to me for 400 uh, because that's more than what you can get in the market, which is 390 okay? So uh, it's kind of other way around than, than the call option. So if you are here uh, along the put option, uh, briefly going through this like for the call option again two cases at maturity if the stock price is less than k you do want to sell it for to me for k you get k you you have to uh, deliver uh, s yeah? you give me the google stock but you get k you get four hundred dollars uh, so that's your payoff at maturity uh, of course you pay the price which i now denote by p for the put option you pay some initial initial premium so this is your total profit loss. If the, uh, as we said, if the if the stock price, if the underlying price is larger than the strike price, you don't want to sell it for just K. If you can sell it in the market for S, so you don't exercise the payoff is zero, uh, and and, uh, and your total profit loss is is negative. It's the price that you paid for the put option uh, at the beginning. So the same notation as with. Uh, as with the sorry, I'm trying to get this paint brush thing. Uh, and as we uh, similarly to the call option, uh, it's the maximum now of k minus s of t and zero, which is your payoff, which is also denoted k minus s of t. It would be superscript plus positive part of k minus s of t, and the total profit is the payoff at maturity, that maximum minus the the put price that you paid at the very beginning. Graphically, similarly as, uh, as for the call option, long put option, uh, so here I assume $8 for the price of the put option. Uh, the, the, you, we just graph this, the, these functions, so this is ignoring the initial, uh, initial cost that you paid. Uh, you don't make money if the stock goes up, if the underlying goes above the strike, you don't exercise zero. Uh, if, uh, if it's good for you, if the stock going down, you can sell it for K, but it's going down. So your, your profit is the difference K minus S, which is this line. Yeah. And then if you, if, you, if you include into this, into account the, the price that you paid for the option, you just move everything by eight, because that was the price of the option. Uh, and the break even point here is, is you know, 50 minus eight, which is 42. Uh, this is when you're going to get the difference, which is 8, uh, which covers your initial cost of 8. Uh, so the break-even point is, uh, is 42. That's when your profit loss is 0. The, the short put position, you're selling the put. It's the minus, the negative of the long put position. You just put the minus in these functions. You draw those functions. You just flip around uh, this in this payoff. In the case of the payoff without taking into account the initial cost, you just flip around the x axis. Uh, so, you know, yeah, you, you are again zero, nobody is uh, getting anything at the end if the option is not exercised. Uh, but you are, as a seller of the put option, you are losing money uh, on this side when the stock price is less than k. This is less dangerous than the call option because your, your loss is limited. Uh, because the stock price can go at, uh, as low as zero, but not below zero. Uh, but still, you can you can lose here quite a bit. Uh, and this is this is if you include the money that you receive as the seller at the beginning, you m add eight, eight say eight dollars to to uh, everything, which is your initial profit of selling this option. So again, forty two would be the, um, the break-even price uh, also for the seller.